So it's actually kind of sad that this park is in the shadow of its five big brothers in Utah and it does not get the national recognition that it deserves. It doesn't get its name from the red sandstone. It gets the name from when the golden hour glows on the rock and it looks like it's glowing. I think that's debatable. That's the research that I did. I am the queen of the house right now and I need to defend my castle. Well, our time here in the metro Las Vegas area is now at an end and we're gonna head out to Valley of Fire State Park where there's some BLM land out there and we're gonna do a little bit of boondocking. Oh, and when we get out to this new spot, I'm gonna do a full outdoor setup with our Blackstone and our fire pit and our chairs. We didn't set any of that up at this RV park because it was literally so crammed, it wasn't even inviting for us to sit outside because we're so close to our neighbor. Um, so on this next one, I'm gonna be doing a full setup. I'm not gonna be lazy. We're gonna try to keep up this weekly schedule where we move every single week. And this RV right now is working out great for us because it has large enough tanks at 70 fresh and 40 gray and 40 black where we can do one week of boondocking. No very, problem. Very easy, very easy. And then the new electrical system, uh, again, we're still getting used to how much power that is and it's, it's quite amazing. Starting to look pretty desolate. Good, and that's exactly what we like. Yep, out of the city, a quick 20 minutes. Valley of Fire State Park, 11 miles it says. And uh, looks like we only got, what, eight, eight minutes to go, six miles for the, uh, the BLM camping out here. Pretty excited to see what this brings. New area for us, new BLM. Every time we leave the park, it feels good to be out of the park. Coming up to three miles away. Landscape's looking really nice out here. Some mountains in the background. I don't see much vegetation. No cactuses out here. So here's the entrance uh, that Campendium told us to use. We can see a school bus out there and uh, some other rigs out there. Entrance looks pretty decent, rocky. Rocky. But solid ground. Not too many people out here yet though. It is a Monday though, that's a big deal. We like, we kind of put our schedule to come in on Mondays instead of the weekend so that it's it's pretty empty as we, as we come in. But if a 40 foot bus makes it back here, it definitely is big rig friendly. For sure. Well, we saw our friends left a message on Perpetual Orbit. Oh yeah, and they're in a 40 some foot, 42 foot. They're in a big rig. Big rig bus, yeah. They're actually the most recent review on this back in December 2021, which is always nice to see not only a recent review, but by somebody that you know, one of your friends, and it's like a... Yeah, and that's Kristen and Jameson, and they're uh, starting to do some videos on boondocking in big rigs and kind of the differences uh, and the experiences they've had doing that for the last year or two, so something to check out. Mm-hmm couple spots off the main road, but we're gonna try to keep going a little bit further and see if we can find a little offshoot that's a little bit more private. How's off-roading for you? Well, it feels, it's a little bit of uh, excitement plus a little nervousness just cause you don't know where the road leads or what it leads to, but it feels good to have a beefy truck and like a beefy trailer, which this is exactly like this isn't super super rugged but this is ideal conditions for what we have yeah not the best uh blm spot i've seen it's there's not really that much i mean there's room for probably like 20 rigs out here but it'd be very packed and uh so i don't know it's not my favorite school bus over there probably has the best spot i don't know we can we can check it out and see if we want to stay for a little bit and <laughs> aaron is not digging this spot I could just only imagine if it was busy. I mean, there's only like four rigs out here, but if there was like 20, it would be very busy. Okay, we got these new wheel chocks. 
Yeah, we're done with the, the X style chocks. Those are just no good. They didn't fit our wheels properly. Yeah, these were really cheap. I think they were like 12 bucks for a set of two. They're not the cheap plastic ones that are gonna get crushed. They are a heavy, solid rubber. I don't know how to use these. So stick the one in the back tire facing forward. Like this? Yep. It's just not the same shape as our tire. Yeah, so we started using the ratchet instead of picking up the the truck to loosen the um, slack on the chains. It's just so much easier to just r loosen the nut and then, right? So much easier. Yeah. The days of battling this thing are over now. Even a short 45 minute drive on travel day can be exhausting, huh? Are you exhausted? Doing I... all the work yourself? No. <laughs> no. I feel like it's a lot harder on you because you're just sitting, you know, when you're just sitting and waiting for other people to do things, five minutes feels like an hour. Well, you just try and do piddly little tasks that take you 20 minutes to do that a normal person could do in like 30 seconds. Yeah, but I will say my absolute favorite thing to do, no matter where we are, how long the trip was, whether or not Aaron is injured or not, is putting out my green plants. I just think that these add so much life to our living space, especially when the sunlight hits it like this. It's just my favorite part. You put, I have a spot for each plant and nothing makes me happier. It's like the finishing touch on the inside where it says, welcome home, sunshine. Beautiful. And I'm debating on where to put our little Mimo antenna. I almost forgot what it was called there for a second. Because this needs to move every time, depending on which window we want to put it in, depending on where we're at. And if anybody has a good cell tower locator app for Apple, um, that's what I'm kind of searching right now to see if I can find something that's good and easy to use. So I just know which direction or which window to put this thing in. Well, I just did a test without even using the antenna and we got 105 megabits download and eight megabits upload. And that's pretty amazing. We usually sit in the, the three to five range, like or maybe 10 if we're lucky. So that's pretty crazy. Well, that's what Kristen and Jameson commented on was the- How fast it was, did they? Yeah, they said how much better the speed is here versus in the actual state park. Oh, yeah, whatever it's hitting off of, that's, that's insanity. 100 megabits down, that's crazy. That is crazy. Look at that wind out there. We got 20 to 30 mile per hour winds. Chris is trying to go running. I don't want to go anywhere. Oh man, you're gonna have to like wear a full mask and suit out there so you don't get your skin ripped off by that dust and sand out there. Well, we're already having things like knock over outside, like our paper towel container, which is pretty hefty. So I just folded up our chairs and put those on the ground and I think I'm just gonna stay here because we'll wait for this to die down a little bit. <laughs> that is some insane wind out there. Okay, so here's the scenario. I was literally just talking about how it's really hard for me to go running without my sweetheart because this is something we do together and we like to do together. And I don't like leaving Aaron alone. I just don't like separating. Like I get separation anxiety, you know, like when you live with somebody in a van for three years and you have your one person that you spend every day with, I guess I've become a little bit codependent and like, it's just not, it's just who wants to go run 20 miles by themselves? <laughs> like what's the fun in that? <laughs> you know, part of the fun is exploring together and experiencing these places together. And then this wind kicked in and it's like, I already had a 
low of motivation. Who wants to run in this? It's pretty intense. It's shaking the RV right I now. stood outside just like this, just to like feel it. And it's just like, <laughs> so I'll just wait it out and see what happens. <laughs> and I know, I know that Aaron's a type where if like something's going on outside, like if our tables or our chairs or something's happening and he can't get up and take care of it, it's going to be a situation. What kind of situation? <laughs> You're going to be a dress ball. I am the queen of the house right now and I need to defend my castle. I am. Like, there's one of us to take care of everything and that person is me. I'm on it. You don't abandon the castle in the middle of a wind wreck. Well, we made it through the windstorm. It has been quite windy all day that 20 to 25 miles per hour gusts. And when we were sitting here working, I was really thankful that I was not out there running. And I was literally almost out the door. And I'm certain I would have been turning back once that happened. Um, so we did just work all day. It's even still windy now. It is dying down a little bit, but honestly, I don't know if it's good enough to cook on the Blackstone. I'm gonna test it out with just the onions because these like to go low and slow anyway and I really don't prefer to cook onions inside, so I'm gonna test it out with that, see if it works. Onions, peppers, we have flank steak, and on the flank steak, I'm just seasoning it with salt and pepper, and I'm doing um, coriander, cumin, chipotle powder, paprika, and then I spritz it with this to give it a nice crust. I've already done this other side, and it gives it just the best flavor. Um, our friend Jesse just pulled in. He's across the street. He's from Adventure Endeavor. His wife is out of town, so he's flying solo today. He's gonna come over and bring some salsa and some cheese and some tortillas, and we're just gonna have a fajita night. And I think I'm actually gonna get my Monopoly game today. I put it out on the table, so. Oh, and I showered today. We showered, feels amazing, but that's a good point because when we showered we used our electric heater which I'm still blown away at our power system so I woke up this morning at like 4 a.m. I just I've been having trouble sleeping lately but when we woke up our battery bank was at 94% and I hammered on it when I woke up Yeah, you did. <laughs> I just woke up and I did um, potatoes in the air fryer and then we use the induction for the first time boondocking because we just keep like layering in all these what can what else can we throw in and still be at our level that's appropriate so I use the induction and I use that to cook up some turkey sausage and some eggs to go with my potatoes. We also use the microwave straight away to heat up Aaron's heat pack. So three super high powered things that dropped it down to like 84. And then I was like, whoa, I need to pump the brakes because it was like 7 a.m. and I'm using all this power and I could just like tell that I should probably take it easy. Yeah, by 10 a.m. we had about 550 watts coming in so quite a bit of sun that early and it was still pretty chilly so yeah we oh, yeah, uh, I forgot about that. we decided to use our little vornado space heater so we for those that have followed a long time we used to have a giant vornado heater that we brought from the van and it actually just died on us so we had it for a good two and a half years and it just flaked out so we bought this new one uh, we got a good deal on it on Amazon, of course. <laughs> it was really cold, it was 35 degrees. So we did blast the propane heater for a good hour, maybe even two, just to like really get it warm in here. And then once we had that baseline of warmth, then we switched over to this just for like a maintenance heat and it worked out really, really well. So anyway, we're gonna get cooking. We're gonna meet up with Jesse. We're gonna play some Monopoly. And tomorrow I'm going to take you on that run. It's time. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. It's a new dawn. There's no wind outside. It's pretty still. I wanted to show you my kit for safety. First of all, I'm bringing two liters of water. It's four bottles. I have an extra power pack. So that's another thing is downloading your maps using either All Trails or Gaia. We use both of those. Always need snacks. Even if you don't think you'll need them, you know, like in case you get lost or in case you see somebody on the trail who's like starving, 
you can throw them a bar. We've been the recipients of food sometimes. <laughs> and it really made us feel better. That's true, on top of a mountain in Colorado. That's right, so ever since then we're like, well, let's just throw a couple extra in. This face gator I use to blow my nose, but you could put it over your face in windy situations if it's clean. I bring like cough drops, salt tabs, Advil, tissues, things like that. I usually carry this little guy, it's just pepper spray, but it's nice to have not only for aggressive humans, but also for any wild animals. Obviously this wouldn't be able to tackle a bear or anything huge, but we're not in bear country right now. Normally Aaron carries this larger one, but I'm gonna carry this one since I'm by myself. And then I also do carry a little pocket knife in here. And then also I share my location with Aaron and I have my location shared with several people. So if anything happens to me, they, Multiple people are gonna know. they can retrace my last steps. <laughs> Sure is nice out here. I ended up not using my all trails because that was just taking me on the highway and I'd rather be out here in nature. But the downside is I'm not very good with uh, navigating <laughs> trails. Usually Aaron does that for us. I'm definitely not sticking to trails or following a map anymore, but you can see right down there, right there, is where we're parked at camp. So as long as I can see that, I'm not worried about where I am on the map. It just helps me get more running in that way and really just be present in the moment and enjoy it. So taking some ridges, getting some views, enjoying that sunshine. It's supposed to be windy again tomorrow, so this is great to get out here. I can stay inside tomorrow and do resistance training when it's windy. Well, I was on a nice road straight ahead, and I took a turn onto this wash, which washes are challenging to walk in, but it feels kind of good. But I see some rock up there it's like pink orange rock and it's different than everything else out here so I'm walking towards it just to see what it looks like up close because it's the only thing unique that I've seen out here it's all pretty similar like this except for that little golden nugget we're gonna go see what's in there These orange rocks are so incredible. The color on them, super fine sand, orange sand. It's very unworldly out here. It definitely feels like Bryce Canyon, but totally different. It's just like, I don't know how to explain it besides unworldly and orange just keeps getting cooler and cooler but look at this close-up of this rock the stripes are so vivid like volcanic out here almost. I just can't soak it up. My last little twirly twirl. Good morning, Valley of Fire Day. One of the best things about boondocking right outside the state park is that it only takes a few minutes to get there. Yeah, literally can't get any closer. 
but unfortunately it still is a big production for us to even get out the front door. Yeah. So that took about an hour. Well, days like this is where we reminisce about hopping in the van. Yeah. And just having everything with us. Like that really was one of our favorite things about traveling in the van was exploring days. You just, you don't have to pack a thing. This is still great too, because it's a little bit easier to drive around and we still got our big, beautiful home to come back to. So we don't know exactly what we're gonna get into today because this is gonna be more of a driving uh, park for us today instead of the typical hiking and exploring. But since it's so close, and that's kind of the whole point, like we said, of boondocking outside these things, and it should be pretty darn beautiful according to the pictures. Yeah, and plus, Aaron's cabin fever is starting to kick in, and we need to do things like this to stay sane because you know what? How's life... my complexion? <laughs> kind of white? Life doesn't stop right now. This is where we need to go extra beyond to do special things to make sure your head stays straight. Yeah, I have not been getting out of the RV very much. It's just not very fun to to strap on the boot and get outside. It's really rocky where we're at. Where we're at. Super rocky. And it's just not a great spot to be, you know, tootling around on a freshly sprained ankle. I've got to say, I don't, have, I don't have fun going out without my sweetheart. So this is special for me too, because I feel like this is our time to connect and explore together. Wow, our first little taste of the park and it's starting to get beautiful. Yeah, it goes from just being kind of average and then it turns into extraordinary, like a blink of an eye. This kind of has the feeling of a national park to it, doesn't it? Like For a small sure. one. Do you think it's because it's so close to like the big Utah Five that it's like, no, nah, we're just gonna make that a state park. Yeah, it absolutely it feels like Utah, Southern Utah. And even this beginning part gives you like that Zion feel with all these rocks. Like you don't have the red rocks right now, but you have the big like Zion feeling rocks. And then once you get in deeper, then it for sure feels like Southern Utah. Super friendly. Super friendly. They always are. Did you hear what he said? Yeah, Rainbow Vista is his favorite. Yep. He said right past the visitor center, the visitor, the, he called it the business center, four miles up, so we could stop there. And he said right after that, there's a right turn for like Rainbow Vista. Cool, this definitely has a national park feel to it. So. We don't oh, do a lot of state parks, I guess, thinking we about really it. We really don't. Yeah. We really don't. Maybe this is one of the, the bigger state parks at 46,000 acres? Yeah, I think so. And I really, really, really want to see a longhorn sheep today maybe two of them. <laughs> so $15 for non-Nevada residents. Nevada residents get in for $10. I would say it's for sure, it's for sure worth it. And they have a campground in here too that we're gonna check out the dump station and see what that's all about. Yeah, check it out. Welcome to Utah. <laughs> hey, now you gotta give credit to Nevada. I bet, Nevada, to Utah. I bet Nevada's like, why does Utah get all this attention when we're just as pretty? Whoa. Dude, don't open the door right when there's two people coming by you. Oh, it's... <gasps> it is! Two! Oh, Yeah, pretty cool. Longhorn sheep, check. Or is it bighorn? Bighorn or longhorn? Bighorn. Bighorn? Yeah. Are we ready? Yep. First lookout for pullovers called beehives. And you can see how they get their name. They do look like honeycombs, don't they? They look like those uh, beehive nests. <laughs> yeah. 
like the paper wasp ones. Yeah. Next up will be Addle Rock and Arch Rock up on our left. It's on the left? Mm hmm Okay. And Ad the campground's up there as well. Addle Rock and Arch Rock. And the campground. Well, so far, these beehives were awesome. So the campground is just a couple miles in from the west entrance, which is where we're boondocking right outside the state park here, uh, closer to the Las Vegas side than the Hoover Dam side. And I don't know how big it is, but we're gonna check out the RV dump situation. Garbages and a double RV dump. Yeah, I brought a little bit of trash with us, not a ton. Oh, that's right, I forgot about that. Chris is on trash duty. Is there a cost on the RV dump? There is no fee. And there's also potable water. That's nice, so if we wanna come back it's 15 bucks to dump the tanks mm -hmm. and get water mm -hmm. and and sneak one more view of the views what was up on top of the staircase petroglyphs oh that's right i heard about that i did you notice i was up there longer than expected were you trying to decipher them Yes, I was telling the story. I was reading the story that they mapped out. Nice. And I was capturing so much, not only to share with our viewers, but to share with you, Aaron. Thank you. Look at how like amazing it is up there. Mm-hmm, that's And fun. then you'd look through this crack and you'd look up and you'd see the bright blue sky. Nice, fun. So this is an interesting way to do it because I'm excited to like come back and show you, Aaron, what I capture out there. And you can at least get a sense of the greatness by being here, you know? Four miles in, we come up on the visitor center and Chris is gonna head inside to get the down low, the scoop, the information on this park. And most importantly, some postcards. I thought you were gonna say pretzels. <laughs> we brought Cheez-Its. Do you wanna go in? Yeah, I'm gonna wander around on crutches. How about I drop you off? No, you can park. Okay. We need a little bit of exercise. And we can't move faster than this couple of are in trouble. It's a race. <laughs> Aaron's winning. So it's actually kind of sad that this park is in the shadow of its five big brothers in Utah and it does not get the national recognition that it deserves. It's my favorite place ever. It's, it's much more than a state park. Much more than a state park. Yep. And it could easily be a small national park. And it's even better because you don't have the busy crowd like a national park has. Exactly. Extra bonus points for lack of people. <laughs> Gosh, it's special here though. And the sky is so blue. And the colors, there's such a variety of colors. Like you get, there's ways too many to even count. There's hundreds of colors out here, ranging from beautiful pastel creams and strawberries to like these wild, bright orange, fiery reds and oranges and everything in between. Pretty amazing. We're on our way back this scenic drive now and we're gonna hit up the Fire Canyon Road and the Rainbow Overlook and we're gonna maybe do a little picnic. The only thing is I failed to bring plates. Oops. And that's like part of the presentation. Plates help. <laughs> I did bring some napkins though. Napkins sometimes work in place of a plate. We will need to use napkins. So this is Fire Canyon Road Lookout, recommended by many of the park rangers. 
and it is pretty beautiful. It looks like dinosaur crunched up this land with their teeth, like, you know, like choppy dinosaur mm -hmm. images. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely pretty prehistoric. Prehistoric, that's a good word. <laughs> Not dinosaur choppy? <laughs> we'll go with prehistoric. Mm. This is what we used to do in the van all the time drive to like the most beautiful spot in the park and then sit in the comfort of our home yep and have lunch or a drink or a snack or whatever and uh we are still loving having the dometic cooler in here along with the solar panel and the lithium battery like mm -hmm. it's a mini version of the van we don't have the comforts of standing up and everything having our home with us but it's still a great option to to visit these things. It's great for refreshments and I use it all the time. But like, this is the first time we've used it on an excursion. Usually we're coming back from a big hike mm. and then there's nothing better than cracking a cold bevy. And of course you can use it for grocery shopping and things like that, so. Mm -hmm. I use it for grocery shopping a lot when it's like 90 degrees out and I have multiple stops to make. It's definitely a luxury. It's not a must have, of course, in your vehicle, but until it, you have one, <laughs> then it's a must have. It could be. It's a great luxury to have. Tick tock. I'm starting to worry about your foot. We got to get that back in bed. I got rehab exercises to do, but man, I really did mess it up. I think I did a light sprain on the inside and a pretty medium to severe sprain on the outside. So it's pretty messed up, very swollen for eight days, and now it's very stiff and I'm just getting into the stretching and rehab part of it. I can I can walk on it, but it's painful and so it's gonna be a long road ahead. 